then let's begin. Good morning and a warm welcome um, to this session um, in the final conference of the New Horizon project. Um, uh, in this session, we will talk about responsible research and innovation and um, uh, sustainability transitions, uh, raising a number of questions in terms of connections, tensions, and untapped potentials uh, when we look at these two research communities. Um, my name is uh, Ralf Littner from the Fraunhofer Institute for Systems and Innovation Research in Karlsruhe, Germany. I'm part of the uh, New Horizon Consortium and uh, together with my uh, other two hosts, uh, Stephanie and uh, Ulrike, whom I will uh, introduce uh, further on, um, we have the pleasure to um, host uh, uh, this session today. Um, before we start, uh, just a, a brief notice. Um, this session will be recorded. I think Helmut already posted that into the into the chat, but just uh, to be sure that uh, everyone is aware of that. Um, the recording will then be uh, put on uh, YouTube, a specific RI channel there. Um, if anyone uh, is, uh, has objections to this, um, I suppose um, uh, get in touch afterwards. Uh, with uh, with um, um, a colleague of the uh, New Horizon team organizing the conference. Um, just um, before we start with the introductions, maybe a few words on on the rationale of of this session. Um, as uh, as uh, many of us uh, in in the New Horizon project and uh, in, in the larger responsibility and research innovation community um, have have um, have um, been been involved in numerous projects and contexts often dealing with the with the focus on um, how research and innovation practices and structures need to be transformed in, in order to better serve societal needs and 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 expectations and values and uh, um, uh, conceptually uh, uh, over the course of, of, of the past years particularly in, in the new horizon project we have learned a lot about um, um, how, how our IPE approaches um, can contribute to, to processes of institutional change. Um, and uh, uh, when we look at these, these activities, uh, we, we believe many of, of these approaches are at least conceptually strongly related to, to, to much of the work that is being conducted in, uh, in the various uh, sustainability transitions communities. And now both communities seem to be working very much uh, on questions on how to integrate the societal dimension into research and, and innovation activities. And despite these very similar ambitions, uh, we, we do believe that there is still so much to, to, to be learned from each other. There, there, there's, there's so much untapped potential in, in terms of uh, mutual uh, learning opportunities. And um, with this session, we you know, uh, thought we could maybe um, contribute a little bit uh, to, to improving uh, these, these uh, processes of exchange and, and maybe start uh, uh, contributing to, to building bridges between these communities, because indeed we do believe there's, there's a lot of, of interesting stuff out there that we can share and, 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 and bring together. So that, that's basically the rationale for, for the, the, this session. Um, now, maybe um, let's uh, move to, to the introductions. Um, I'll, I'll start with uh, introducing the, the other two hosts of, of the session. Uh, we have um, Stephanie Daimer with us, uh, also um, from Fraunhofer ISI here in Karlsruhe. Um, Stephanie is a senior researcher here at, at Fraunhofer ISI and head of the business unit dealing uh, with uh, innovation at, for transformation. And um, uh, in, in Horizon, uh, Stephanie is the, the leader of a social lab uh, dealing with the SWAFs uh, um, uh, activities in, in um, the um, in H2020. And uh, um, the other host here with us is um, Ulrike Wunderle uh, from the Federation of German Scientists uh, um, uh, based in Berlin. And she's also, of course, part of the New Horizon Consortium and uh, is the leader of the social lab on climate, climate action, environment and uh, resource efficiency. And so you can already see here we are in terms of the, the, the organization of the session, we're bringing together these different perspectives. Uh, in addition to, to the session hosts, uh, we uh, are very lucky to have the support uh, from, from Helmut and Shauna from the uh, organizing team um, of, of the final conference. So um, if any things uh, 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 pop up that need to be solved, I'm sure Helmut and, and Shauna can help us out here. Um, speaking of housekeeping, uh, just a, a brief words on, on the agenda of the session. Um, 
uh, we will start off with a with a, a, a keynote uh, presented by by uh, Douglas Robinson, whom I uh, will introduce um, after uh, a few minutes. Um, and followed by that, we will have two short uh, presentations or interventions from Agnes and uh, Fabio, who also were involved in, in the process of um, of uh, the, the social lab activities in, in New Horizon. Um, and after these presentations, uh, we will uh, move into a more interactive working mode. Um, we will split into um, uh, three or four uh, working groups, uh, breakout groups, where we can discuss uh, the issues of this session uh, more, more, in more detail. Um, before handing over to, to, to um, Douglas for, for the presentation, um, we would like to have a short uh, warm up and invite, would like to invite you to um, take part in a, a, a two short Mentimeter polls. Um, I think the first one is already posted um, in the chat. Thank you for that, Helmut. Um, so you just, um, I might just ask you to uh, open up that link. Wonderful. Um, so the question is, um, are you engaged in your work with uh, the questions of responsive research innovation, sustainability transitions, or both, or none of those? And um, so the result uh, of, of this question is actually quite, quite interesting for us, just to, to get a sense of um, who, who is participating today in, in our session here. So just let's wait um, a few seconds uh, until the... Um, Answers come in. Okay. So seems, I mean, I guess not everyone took part in the poll, poll uh, so far. Um, don't see much more movement anymore, but this is already a, a, a great, um, great result. We have uh, a large number of people actually um, are working in both areas, uh, which which is a good sign, I guess, um, because uh, this will already help us a lot to um, to build these bridges I was referring to earlier. Um, and also in terms of uh, the two, two main um, uh, research communities we want to um, uh, get an exchange with here, um, we, we have a relatively even um, uh, distribution, which which is pretty cool. Uh, actually, we were worried that we might have, you know, um, uh, a clear dominance of one group, um, but that's not the case. So, um, good start with that. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the second one. The question here is, uh, from your personal experience, what do you consider to be the most important challenge for bringing together RI and sustainability transitions? Um, so, please uh, type in a few words in the, in the poll. This probably will take a bit longer. Okay. So interdisciplinarity is already uh, rated quite, quite hard, high. <laughs> That's great because uh, uh, Fabi will also talk about uh, uh, th those issues later on. Okay. And of course, the silo question. I, I assume the silos uh, refer to um, to the situation that um, that there is not. Um, that the, let, let's let me put it this way: that the exchange between these communities uh, uh, could probably be improved. I assume that is meant with the silos. Okay. Great. So I guess we can pick up on that um, uh, uh, in, in the later discussions, particularly in the in the breakout groups. Um, so we can um, um, 
talk about these things then in more detail when we uh, get into the discussion mode. Okay, so that was already a, a, a nice warm up. So thank you very much for, for uh, participating. Um, and we will, um, of course, um, be able to have to, to have a look at the, particularly at the results of the of the word cloud, um, which uh, might be useful in the, in the breakout groups later on. So now um, I would like to move on to um, to our first presentation by um, uh, Douglas Robinson. Um, those who, who don't don't know him yet, uh, uh, Doug is um, uh, at, a, at at Lises, which uh, uh, is the laboratory. Um, uh, for interdisciplinary studies of science, uh, innovation, and society, uh, based in Paris. Um, and in addition to that, Doug is also closely involved uh, at um, at uh, UCL, um, uh, University of College in, in London, together with um, and works with the group of uh, Mayana Matsukato a lot, um, and which is also, I, I think, an, an interesting link here, uh, particularly when we talk about um, these these exchanges between the, these two communities we're focusing on today. Um, yes, I think without much uh, more ado, I would uh, just hand over to Doug and I'm looking forward to your uh, presentation. Okay, thank you, Ralph. Thank you, everybody. Um, just putting my, my slides in full screen mode. Can somebody confirm you see them? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, and, and Ralph or, or Stephanie, um, please uh, tell me if I'm going too, too much further than 15, 20 minutes. This is a new presentation. And um, <laughs> you know how it is with new presentations. So, so hello everybody. Um, I was invited um, to give a kind of warm up to linking some of the high level um, conceptual and practical um, connections between uh, transition studies and RRI community. In my lab, um, we have both, and I see one of my old PhD students uh, in, in the audience, it's great, on transition studies. Um, so I, I took this bold title to, to kickstart the discussion because um, I'm very much in, involved with Mariana Matsukato on mission oriented innovation policy. And in my, uh, that's at UCL and in CNRS in uh, France, we're looking at transformative innovation policy and RRI. How do we connect these in different ways? And so achieving missions and delivering the Green Deal. Uh, so. This talk will be about um, kickstarting the discussions. It will not be exhaustive. Um, please um, feel free to put in um, questions, criticisms, comments um, in the chat, and we will be gathering them and bring them to the discussion later. And so the aim is for finding complementary insights, challenges, and opportunities for RRI and transition studies. So moving forward, you've all seen this. Um, I'm going to admit somebody. Um, You've all seen this picture about sustainable development goals. Um, we're in a, a situation where grand societal challenges are shaping the research and innovation agenda, um, big, bold challenges. And you, most of you will have heard, and I'll come to this in a moment on the European situation. We're in an age of missions again. Um, this notion of mission, a more, let's say, I take it as specific grand challenges, are further articulating the grand challenges into doable problems. And I'm just uh, free advertising a book of a friend of mine there, but I'll use that to, as the title of my slide. So in the age of missions, so what are missions and why are they important? Um, so, and how are they gonna be used? I'll talk about that in a moment. So missions are more than broad principles, they privilege impact. So it's about grand societal challenges, being very specific, identifying the impacts which are de desirable, and their aim is to mobilize and coordinate a variety of actors at different times, and different scales. Um, as I said, it's a translation of grand challenges into doable problems. Um, it's the key role for these missions. Um, in the past, they were often related to well-defined outcomes, like putting a man on the moon, um, which mostly entailed technological challenges. Um, but modern missions, such as those addressing climate change, are more complex as they are. Well, there are fewer technology challenges um, and outcomes are clearly defined. Um, clear technology challenges, of course, there are many technological challenges, but it requires action across the board and quite often no central actor steering it like NASA with the um, Man on the Moon program or the Russian Space Agency with their attempt at landing on the Moon. 
So why am I talking about this? Um, we're in um, New Horizons. This is a SWAFs project from um, Horizon 2020 and looking to uh, the now current um, framework program, Horizon Europe. I've got to start saying the next one, but it's here already. Um, missions are a key part of this and it's about coordination and actually changing research and innovation process. So, as I said before, um, this is just a reference to one of the documents, only one of course there are many um, European Commission reports um, proclaiming mission-oriented research innovation as the solution to uh, tackling grand societal challenges. And you see the, the idea is to translate grand challenges into specific missions and those missions to guide mission projects. So we're moving from broad missions at a large scale to very specific on the ground activities. I'm coming back constantly to this uh, point the talk. And so uh, these are the five mission areas. You, most of you would have heard about them. They're um, quite high on the agenda in Horizon Europe and they're going to be shaping a lot of the funding, a very large part of the funding in Horizon 2020. And so we will be dealing with these and trying to implement missions uh, within these mission areas over the coming seven years and so um, we have to think about this but of course there are other things as well like the European Green Deal which also I mean, it's, say it's not exactly a mission oriented um, program but in, in, in my uh, definition it is it has um, transformation challenges identified such as zero pollution ambition in the top right for a toxic free environment to um, financing the transition to a green economy. Um, these are big challenges which are driving the funding for research and innovation process. So <laughs> the age of missions again, um, it requires transformations of socio-technical systems, of agriculture, of energy provision, but it also um, trans requires transformations of processes of research and innovation to be able to steer activities towards these specific challenges and you, you can see the link already between uh, transition studies and re responsible research and innovation in this slide already. So I'm not going to give a review of responsible research and innovation and transitions, I'm going to give the tip of the iceberg um, to kickstart discussions. This is a personal view, um, so please take this into consideration. So responsible research and innovation. This is a book I'm reading at the moment, so I just thought I'd, it's a pretty picture as well, so I put it on. Um, responsible research and innovation. So the origins in broadening the development of new and emerging technologies. So it started around nanotechnology, synthetic biology, geoengineering, and all these new and emerging technology fields, of how to incorporate, um, um, so you probably don't see this, but I'm getting requests to admit people to the room <laughs> in front of my slides. Um, so the origins are in emerging, uh, new and emerging technologies and broadening the capacity of research and in, researchers and innovators to think about uh, responsibility about the future in a number of ways. So to, to build capacity to anticipate on the future issues around science, and technology and society, to build reflexivity on the processes, norms and values that shape and drive research and innovation. Um, RRI um, was built on to include uh, a variety of stakeholders into the process of research and innovation, inclusivity. And most importantly, is to do this in real time as uh, uh, new and emerging technologies are being developed, to be able to incorporate reflexivity on broader issues to help, uh, I'm going to put it, improve the design and development of new and emerging technologies. Most of you know this from the, from the um, survey we just did. But in the main, it's been a technocentric um, approach. It's located high upstream in the sense that it's on new and emerging technologies rather than stabilized technologies in the main. And well, something else about RRI, it's been powered by the European Commission policy experiments. So the policy experiments including RRI in Horizon 2020 and SWAFs is um, one of the main programs for facilitating this, but of course RRI is a cross-cutting element of Horizon 2020. So we have a, a lot of projects, a lot of um, uh, ideas, a lot of knowledge about experimenting, 
incorporating and grounding RRI into practice. So what I wanted to share with you is, in my perspective, some, not all, um, of the trends and current challenges being addressed in the RRI community. So broadening from the technocentric bias, we see this in uh, responsible research and innovation, for example, focusing on regions, what are responsible research and innov innovation ecosystems at the regional level, and also sectors, you see move that way. Tackling the early stage emphasis of RRI, so broadening and deepening the understanding of scale-up, generalization and adoption. What is responsible scale-up? So grounding RRI practices, of course, I mentioned this, there's a lot of projects, and in fact, Fabio is in, involved in, in one of these projects, um, grounding RRI practices in various locations of research and innovation ecosystems. Development of indicators, um, metrics and accountability mechanisms. This is right now um, key for RRI. Building equitable co-design and co-creation, new technologies. This is about um, moving beyond open innovation to have true um, co-innovation and reconsideration of the innovation bias. So suggestions of responsible stagnation, degrowth being um, included in the discussions of the RI community. So this is just giving you a flavor and you can add to these into the discussion, other examples of trends and current challenges that RI is facing. And we can have a look to see where we can bridge between uh, transitions. So transitions, again, very briefly. The perspective, of course, is on the transformation of socio-technical systems, like mobility, energy, and how they work, how these systems work. And so there's a concept of regimes to understand how these evolve, what shapes uh, the activity and the processes of these socio-technical systems. Now, I'm going to use this definition for those who do not know um, transitions. I, I just whipped it out of uh, an article I was reading yesterday by um, Silvercole et al, and he was talking about energy transition. So I'll read it out. So um, an energy transition as a can be seen as a change in sources of energy supply, conversion, infrastructure, or energy use from one technology to another at different possible spatial scales, a household, a city, a country, a region, etc. So you see it's a mixture of the configuration of elements that make up a socio-technical system and the routines and practices that drive it. This is transitions. I'll leave this for you to read at another time. There's roots in various different um, literatures, um, evolutionary uh, approaches to te technical change, innovation systems, complex systems. You can imagine looking at socio-technical systems. They have systems thinking involved. I'll leave a reference to a paper which looks at the origins of this field. Um, transitions therefore focus on the transformation from one socio-technical system and regime to another socio-technical system and regime. And with an emphasis on sustainability, sustainability transitions like energy, mobility and agriculture, how to make those most sustainable, it's now broadening to digital transformations, health transformations, etc. So it's moving, it's broadening its scope in terms of which socio-technical systems it's looking at and leading to a number of trends and current challenges being addressed. Now, these are just a few. Um, understanding the societal effects of transitions. So not all transitions are good, of course. For example, better understanding the destabilization processes of incumbent social technical systems. So we have a project in our lab on this. Anticipating and foresighting transitions to enable reflexive steering and to target policies of strategic action. How do you anticipate on transitions of large social technical systems and regimes in a way that can be lensed to decision making? That's a key um, challenge for transitions. How, where, and when to finance transitions? Where do resources, where should uh, uh, resources be invested and when? And just an equitable transitions, looking at equity, looking at um, you know, fairness. Um, during the transition process. These are all elements, not all of them, of challenges, which of course you can see resonate with some of the questions in the RRI community. So what? So there are many shared challenges for implementing missions and the Green Deal, other challenge-oriented activities around research and innovation. 
And so what I'm going to do is give you some of my ideas of what are some of the shared challenges for implementing missions in the Green Deal between responsible research and innovation and sustainability transition studies. So what are the areas that I think are interesting for um, either sharing uh, expertise from one area to another or together trying to figure these things out. So the first one, co-creating missions. So defining desirable directions of research and innovation with a large range of stakeholders. Lots of expertise in co-creating and uh, working with a large range of stakeholders from RRI, care over many of the SWAPs projects. Less so, and please correct me if I'm wrong, members of the audience, in the sustainability transition studies. There's a lot to learn from RRI to sustainable transition studies. Driving just and equitable transitions, so reflections on equity, societal effects of transitions, lots of experience on both sides to tackle this challenge. Responsible scaling, so moving to the generalization of new and emerging technologies rather than just the emerging stages. A lot of issues there that both sides, RRI and sustainable transition studies, are wrestling with now. And it's a hot topic right now, and um, we can discuss that afterwards if you like. Um, Coordinating research and innovation ecosystems to address missions. How do you get innovation ecosystems, you know, researchers, industry, intermediary organizations, civil society, consumer groups, uh, patient organizations for health, how do you get them to work together in a coordinated way to address specific missions? More importantly, not only over space, in the region, across the nation, internationally, but also over time, because roles change in the uh, development and generalization of innovation. So building anticipatory capacities for steering, um, the whole idea of missions is to guide research and innovation towards uh, a desirable aim. So um, how do you do that? You need anticipatory capacity, you need to anticipate what's needed, reflect on various issues and bring that back into the decision making process. And there's a lot to be taken from both RRI and sustainability transition studies there. Grounding the steering and assessment capacities. How do you ground them in? How do you get them involved? Um, how do you create institutional change? Now, of course, RRI has been involved in this at least for the last uh, three, four years. It's a requirement, in fact, for many of the SWAS projects, and all of the SWAS projects to be talking about this. So there's a lot to, lot to learn from this. Developing indicators or indications of transformative change that can be used in real time. So new metrics, new processes of understanding transformative change impacts that can be actually mobilized in the present. You know? An identification of locations and levers for transformative change. Where should resources be invested? Where should act, what sort of activities should be done where? This is key. And when we start looking between sustainable transition studies and RRI, there are a lot of perspectives and perhaps some differences of opinion of where the key locations and levers of transformative change could be. So last slide. So wrapping up, so RRI and transition communities differ in core perspectives, but they find common ground in the challenges brought up by missions and European Green Deal. So RRI has been technocentric by origin, but it's broadening and transitions has been historical and real-time in the main, there has been some scenario exercises, um, but is moving towards foresighting and driving just transitions and identifying low-key and lever, uh, levers of uh, transformative change. So my point is, and I've given some thoughts on this, there is common ground and complementarity between the two uh, communities, and we already saw that uh, in the, uh, the um, survey just now. And so with that, I will leave it open. Thank you very much. Thank you, Douglas. Thanks a lot for that. Um, I'm, I'm really fascinated and impressed by what you just um, yeah, um, guided us through in the past 15 minutes. And we were perfectly in time, by the way. Really great. Thank you for that. Um, so um, what you're going to do now is um, that you certainly have a lot of questions and comments on that, and you would like to start a discussion. And we invite you to, to do that in the chat. So please leave comments for Douglas and questions in the chat and also for the other speakers who will follow now. And um, after we have heard um, Agnes and Fabio, we will open a bit the plenary discussion um, 
for your questions and comments. Right, so um, um, we have um, um, the pleasure to have two participants here, um, Agnes and Fabio, who have both been um, uh, active as participants in the social labs of New Horizon. You know, so New Horizon works this, this social lab approach and action research approach, where we try to um, bring together uh, stakeholders um, for each of the different program parts of Horizon 2020. So there were all, overall 19 social labs, um, and for each of them, we composed um, different types of stakeholders um, who work based on a shared um, um, understanding of, um, of the challenges out there for the program um, worked on, on pilot activities. So um, we um, have now um, Agnes, um, Agnes Soliomi speaking to us. Um, she will not only speak based on her um, um, experience as a participant in New Horizon, she participated in the social lab on societal challenge five, so societal challenge of climate action environment, resource efficiency, and raw materials. Um, but she has also a lot of experience um, bringing, um, yeah, to, uh, today to the table here. Um, Agnes is a consultant on ecosystem services, green infrastructure, and nature-based solutions. She's based in Hungary. Um, she has been working on EU climate change and biodiversity projects and related policy advocacy for over a decade. She has been an expert of the European Commission and several international NGOs on ecosystem services, green infrastructure and nature-based solutions. She has also contributed to international science policy interfaces um, and was a member of the EU Horizon 2020 advisory group on the SWAFs program Science Within for Society um, and again on also societal challenges, challenge five on climate action. Um, She's currently involved in um, different consultancy work in NGOs and in academia, so, so she has quite a broad perspective on the different, um, actually, stakeholder spheres also that are relevant for um, both for RRI and also from the perspective of sustainability transitions. Um, we have asked Agnes and Fabio to um, reflect on the question that we have put up for the session. Um, based on their own personal experience. So please, Agnes, the floor is yours. Many thanks, Stephanie, and, and hi, everyone, as well. Uh, thank you for the introduction as well. I think that was one minute from my five minutes interaction, so just read that. <laughs> thanks a lot. And uh, you know, I think I would like to come back to Douglas saying that I th that was a great presentation. Thank you, Doug. There was a lot of focus on the RRI and sustainable transitions, but I must say when I started off first, it was just rather a focus on sustainability and more even within sustainability, climate change and resources and, and biodiversity. So maybe there is a third group who is very much just focusing on, on you know, the hardcore silo scientific issues. And, and it's just really great that we could maybe bring together these uh, two or maybe three groups. I'm not sure, but I'm rather focusing on a, on that aspect because this is how I started getting involved in the SWAFs a, and also a, with the New Horizon project. A, so as uh, Stephanie mentioned I have quite a wide range of experience of coming mostly from uh, nature sciences in then slowly uh, transitioning maybe we, together with the European Commission because I see they are also now going towards the, very much trying to getting involved more topics, more sustainability transitions. Uh, so this has also happened to me. First started with the nature and biodiversity, uh, then uh, then focus more on sustainability transition, and I'm also now involved in projects more a lifestyle transitioning and climate change. So um, being more focused in transdisciplinarity, in the but what, what I, uh, Stephanie said that I was involved in the SWAFs, uh, uh, working in the advisory group of the European Commission. And it was uh, mostly about when I started, it was more like curiosity rather than actual knowledge about what uh, responsible research is, because I really had not much uh, ideas, but it sounded all interesting that the Commission wants to bring together all kinds of uh, people with different backgrounds to work together in the work program. And it was the 2016 uh, 2017 work program and in their discussion what really struck me as coming from somebody who has no idea about RI 
is a is that was really hard to grasp what RI is. So there were like lots of blurred lines about what this thing is. And then most of the people with different backgrounds, I think it was a good day debate about what this what RI really is and how it can be incorporated widely towards Horizon 2020 programs. And what really uh, struck me is like a couple of people was were saying that they were Horizon 2020 uh, evaluators that most of the program writers, the project writers, they didn't really consider RRI integrated. It was more like at the end of the project proposals, you have to write about sustainability and gender. And I think most people in general, apologies if I offend anyone, but from my field, they are they're most like, oh, what to write about sustainability? What what to do with this gender issue? So it's like most people think that it's an extra. Uh, cherry on the top and it's not really something that conceptually integrated and, and thought through in many Horizon 2020 projects. So there was, I think that's maybe one of the uh, points for the for the discussion after how these things, how RRI and, and their related concepts equally with the transitions, with the sustainable transitions because they are really heavy concepts for, for, some, for some fields. How, but how they can be equally integrated so so they are actually considered in all level not just a suffering at the end of the pro proposal writing uh, which gives lots of headaches for certain people so that was uh, my experience from from the swaps of course that was it's just more about the debate points for the for the later discussion and as a reflection of the of what uh, we did in the social lab within New Horizon. We were involved in, in urban transitions, which was one of the pilot uh, for, for the New Horizon uh, SC5, so the focus on environment. And uh, we were a couple of uh, nature scientists and they're a sociologist about this project. It was really evolving. It didn't come through, but it was really evolving well with the co-creation and uh, various uh, social groups participation. In, at the end, we, we put together and compiled some, uh, some messages that would have been worthwhile giving to the, to the commission about how transdisciplinarity and co-creation and stakeholder involvement should be, should be really integrated at the more horizon, horizontal level uh, within Horizon 2020 pro projects, but also uh, beyond uh, within the Green Deal or, or even further. Uh, but I really wonder like would how it would have been different our proposal if we hadn't been within specifically in an RRI uh, background or, or conceptual project. In, in I think it's uh, because many of uh, maybe uh, sustainability researcher focusing more on climate change or biodiversity where I come from, it's just we, we might have been in, in, uh, in the dark, uh, we might, <laughs> Have just lack of awareness about how conceptually integrate RRI and maybe we just need like this kind of project and more specific guidance on, on what this is exactly and how, how we can think from this perspective from the very beginning when we start making the project or the proposals because I think that for from, from my view that would be really helpful so we had just a, like a better grasping on what RRI is and how it's related uh, to transitions or or any kind of other field of uh, natural or social sciences. So that would have been my thoughts for for the after coming uh, discussion. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for everyone. Thank you, Agnes. It was really great, and I think it opens up, all, as you said, somehow a bit of the view on on the th the third group, right? So um, so. Um, the, those who, who really really struggle to to integrate um, sort of the, the basic basics of the approach into their work, and that's obviously true. Um, and um, yes, I, I I will not comment too, too much now on what you said, but also again invite um, everybody to to in, in to write their comments into the chat. The chat, sorry, I, I really I tried to follow the chat <laughs> while I was listening to Agnes. It's, it's not possible. It's really um, exploding there. A lot of, lot of questions and comments here. 
and, and um, answers already provided by Douglas. So um, um, please go on with this. It's, it's really good to see uh, how many topics you're bringing up there. Um, and um, nevertheless, I also invite you to um, obviously to listen now to um, the next speaker that we have. Um, we have Fabio Fiudo with us. He has been um, a member of the social lab um, Science Within for Society in the New Horizon project, has been actively contributing to, to different questions there and different pilot actions. And Fabio has a long standing experience. He works at Knowledge and Innovation, which is a social research institute in Italy. Um, and he has more than 20 years of experience in the fields of sociological research and social sciences. And he's currently involved in some RRI projects as well as citizen science projects and also sustain energy transition projects. Um, he has been working as an evaluator in framework programs. Um, and um, he has also served as a member of the Italian National Committee on Science and Society. So um, Fabio, um, again, we've asked you on your long standing, based on your long standing experience to, to look at these issues and to share a few thoughts um, on this. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Yes, I, I took part uh, and I'm proud to, to have taken part in the, in the, in the social lab of uh, New Horizon <laughs> with you and other colleagues. And I thank you very much for inviting me to this important conference. I, my, my reflection is divided into uh, eight short points that uh, I want to, to share with you. Uh, the first point uh, is about the connection between uh, RRI and sustainability transition, which is, of course, uh, uh, strong. There are many connections, of course, as, uh, as has been said by Ralph and also Doug. And, uh, one would say that the work done along this uh, last 15 years uh, on RRI and Science Within for Society has been uh, exactly addressing uh, the issue of uh, preparing uh, um, R&I organization to face the great, the great transitions that uh, um, characterize the contemporary society, including uh, the transition towards environmentally sustainability uh, and uh, as well as the other three transition uh, which are underway the, the digital one the epidemiological one very important and also the institutional one I'm, I'm referring to democracy the concept of democracy then the second point i think that to better understand uh, the connections between rri and sustainability transitions it is very important uh, um, to look at the communities of people uh, which are behind these areas. Um, on the side of RRI, much has been done along this year to create a community made up uh, of different already existing uh, research groups, ethics, uh, gender, uh, public engagement, citizen engagement, uh, education, and so on. But finally, they are now all sharing the, the common idea of the importance of uh, um, changing research systems, favoring an alignment uh, uh, of science with society by activating uh, uh, processes of um, institutional change. Uh, I'm uh, involved in uh, uh, projects on, on that, as Grace, as Bios, uh, Territoria, Repeat and Chat. Clearly, uh, an RRI community emerged um, also thanks to the strong support given by the C um, through the SWAPS program. The question concerns uh, how long this community will remain active uh, in the new context of, EU, new horizon, uh, of the Horizon EU. Um, but on the other side, and this is the, the third point, uh, something should be said about the community of a sustainability transition. In this case, I think the problem is more complex. In fact, um, all the research areas connected to that community, I'm referring to climate, energy, ecological transition, um, uh, have been long uh, uh, very much characterized by an interaction and uh, uh, exchange between STEM, um, 
discipline, uh, technology driven discipline on one side and um, SSH discipline. Uh, but my impression is that this interaction has been developed um, mostly outside SWAF's activity and almost without mentioning RRI. Uh, for example, uh, clean and energy transition since seven framework program until now, Horizon 2020, is built on the idea uh, that energy transition has a twofold nature, uh, technological but also social. Uh, both dimensions coexist with equal dignity. Um, I'm, in this regard, I'm having uh, the experiences of uh, Entrance's project and the uh, Smartis project. So it can be said that uh, uh, SSH is very well considered in that program, while uh, RRI seems uh, um, not to find a place in that program, unless as a flag. Uh, and neither um, more recently in the Green Deal, although some of RRI key uh, concepts have been certainly practicing uh, in those programs, such as those of uh, co-creation, uh, citizen involvement, multi-stakeholder engagement, citizen science, to which uh, a specific topic, uh, topic has been um, devoted by the Green Deal Corps. So uh, it is worth addressing what, uh, uh, as a fourth point, uh, what has been called the SWAFs bubble, um, many times mentioned at the, in this conference yesterday. The SWAFs bubble and its impact. Of course, in these years, also some group of STEM community working on sustainability transition have taken part um, in the SWAFs program. Um, and this has been largely reported in the conference. I personally had uh, an amazing experience uh, with bioscientists within two projects on institutional change in bioscience. One is uh, uh, ResBios. Um, but my impression is that uh, despite the efforts of the promoter of SWAF's uh, project and of the European Commission to my stream, the, the SWAF concept and RRI principle and practices, uh, thus uh, uh, breaking silos and the SWAF's bubble, those actions uh, have been limited or sometimes ineffective. Uh, then um, I would like to touch on the theme of the tensions uh, recorded by the title of our meeting. I would say that uh, tensions often emerge when the disciplines try to cross the disciplinary silos and uh, to take an interdisciplinary or cross-sectoral point of view. This is linked the, uh, to the SWAF's bubble concerning RRI, but uh, this also happens in the communities of the sustainability transition. So we understand how um, this process of dialogue and collaboration is very, very complex. Um, also because there are no incentives uh, uh, that favor the process of breaking uh, disciplinary silos. Um, sometimes uh, it seems that overcoming uh, um, disciplinary boundaries often means uh, deviating uh, from the course of uh, uh, the university career, even more so uh, if a researcher promotes dialogue uh, with other stakeholders outside academia. Uh, so to summarize, reflection should be made not only on RRI, and the sustainability transition, but all, also on the, on the three communities behind the, the sustainability transition, RRI, STEM, and SSH. Uh, by the way, something has been done, uh, hopefully, um, has, has been done so, so far to put these communities in connection, but uh, there is still a lot to be done, hopefully, in the forthcoming program. Uh, and the, most of the work regards exactly the tensions connected the, to the this disciplinary separation. And uh, so I come to the themes of the transdisciplinarity, uh, interdisciplinarity, and the cross sectoral transversality, uh, which should be duly considered in this regard. Uh, these themes were also the object, as uh, Stephanie uh, said, uh, of the uh, beginning of reflection. Uh, that we made within the New Horizon Social Lab uh, more than a, a year and a half ago. 
together with other colleagues and, and Stephanie. Um, um, at that time, we were wondering how the forthcoming program, uh, which is now about to be published, um, would deal with these issues. And then we said that perhaps it is necessary uh, to establish protocols, methods, uh, uh, concerning the practice of uh, inter-transdisciplinary um, uh, uh, research and uh, transversality. And uh, my impression is, this, this, uh, is, is that uh, this suggestion is really um, still valid. And also, uh, my impression is that it would be not sufficient to include the interdisciplinary research among the parameters of the evaluation. And this brings me to the last point, the untapped potential of the relation between RRI and sustainability transition. In my opinion, in fact, uh, these potentials are mainly connected to the possibility to systematically uh, promote interdisciplinarity, transdisciplinarity research, transversality throughout the European uh, research area, providing uh, uh, the various disciplines with the opportunity to, to go deeper into uh, common work, uh, breaking uh, the, the, the respective uh, sites. Uh, and I think this is a um, concrete and effective way to uh, operation, operationalize the, uh, the RRI concept throughout the European research uh, area. And uh, this is one of the main tasks, I think, of the, the new program. Thank you. This is my reflection. I hope it will be useful for the discussion. Thank you, Fabio, for, for adding your um, thoughts and also for adding a, another couple of issues uh, to the table. So um, I, I was trying to, to write a bit uh, along while you all three were speaking, and I think I collected at least 10 different challenges. I also had the chance to look again at the result of the Mentimeter that we had in the beginning, where everything what you said also is reflected already. So um, there's a lot of um, a lot of things to do, um, but obviously people think it's worth it to do it. That, that is also clear from, from what is written there and what, what I see in the chat. So um, um, we have had a lot of questions in the chat already, and there seem to be many questions and comments already answered, but a few remain unanswered. And I think we have the time to address them now before we go into the groups. Shauna, could you help us a bit find directions through the chat and alert us to the questions that are open. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so the first question that went um, unanswered was from Catherine. And uh, this was from the um, perspective of sustainability transitions to the RI um, community. So maybe the New Horizon RI folks can um, answer this. Uh, the question is, sustainability transitions are grappling with assessments, whether the new socio-technical systems are actually sustainable. For example, is electric, electric mobility actually sustainable and under what conditions? Uh, this involves LCA and integrated assessment communities. Is there a similar struggle in the context of RRI? Thank you, Shauna. Who wants to take this? just say I recognize it we, we try to integrate LCA analysis uh, into some of our systems thinking work in, in, in our lab in France. Um, for RRI um, I think technology assessment um, approaches have been at the core of RRI since its initiation and so it depends on, on where you're looking. If it's about um, technology assessment in my talk I, I kind of overemphasize this to make a point about technocentric aspect of RRI. When you start thinking about systems, it's different types of assessments that are needed. And in our lab, um, we're quite interested in assessing um, scaling up of, of new technologies. And this is where um, we start seeing interesting things. But, you know, anticipating LCA and factoring that in to your technology assessment activities, we've been doing this, but um, I'm just telling you what we've been doing and nodding in agreement, but um, perhaps um, Fabio or Agnes or Ralph I, or Stephanie. Like that. 
I, I, if I may, Stephanie, I, I had some experience on uh, LSA, um, LCA, sorry, <laughs> on uh, about the um, uh, materials. That the we have participated in a, in a in an important group related to the um, uh, relationship between society and materials, and uh, a lot of time in discussing with the engineer of materials, it uh, came the idea to include. Uh, um, uh, part related to responsible research and innovation within the LCA. Now the problem is how, because again, the problem is also the disciplinary boundaries that in this case are very strong. But materials is very interesting because materials are very social, let's say, since the beginning. So it's a place where RRI, it's a subject, an issue which RRI could uh, could give uh, an interesting contribution. So yes, I, I don't know if this was the question, but uh, yes. If I could just add, um, Ryder Foley in the States has worked on RRI and LCA and how to work with engineers on this. So there's a tip if you want to follow that up. <laughs> <laughs> thank you both for I'll this. I'll put the name in the chat. And I would also um, think this is, um, this is a struggle that is still there. It's not yet solved. So um, to really come up with a good assessment, um, it's a big task. Shauna, I think there is one or two other questions, right? Yes, there are. Um, so the next one, and I'm going to read it just for the sake of time. Um, so the next one is from Kaisa, if I'm saying the name correctly. And this is about um, publishing in both RRI and sustainability transitions. It's difficult to get published in journals such as um, EIST or uh, JRI. Uh, our articles are not focused enough in these journals. Um, so futures-oriented journals seem to be interdisciplinary enough to accept such approaches. What could be done to make publishing such studies easier in order for them to reach the scholars in both approaches? Right, thank you. I, I agree. Um, I tend to publish in uh, technology forecasts and social change for that very purpose. Um, we find it difficult to put some of our work through um, GRI and ICE, I don't know how to pronounce it. We're trying and arguing and we have some success but you know um i think yes um it will change over time and you start seeing uh, similar authors in all three of those journals and so um no i recognize what you're saying thank you i just saw that Elmarie marie forsberg added a little comment on lca and ri the topic that we had before so there's a link Very to a journal article in the chat as well perfect thank you for that shauna um, is anything open in the chat? Yes, um, so then Douglas and Amir had a, a nice exchange in the chat. So the next question I see is from uh, Cornelia and this is um, the some tensions um, that probably can be turned also into complementarity between the focus on processes of RI versus the arguably larger focus on concrete results in sustainability transitions. So if anyone wants to reflect on that. Well, if you think about the mission-oriented issues in Horizon Europe, this is going to, both are going to be needed, aren't they? I mean, missions are supposed to be impact-oriented, but when you start thinking about just transitions, e equity, responsibility, you've got to start thinking about these processes. I put it in one of my many slides, you know, transformation of social technical systems, that aim, but also transformation of the processes of research and innovation so I think you're right. I think there's complementarity there because both are needed in the new uh, mission-oriented landscape. I mean, it's not all about missions. But I, I use that to centre my point. Mm -hmm. Yes, in my opinion, this, it's very important to focus on the concept of transformation. Yeah. Because we in SWAF's projects uh, and our right community, SWAF's bubble, uh, have been experimented a lot of time in, in the last year, the problem of transformation, which, which is very difficult to, to, to achieve. It's not easy. Uh, it's a, it's a, it has a many, many uh, variables that have to be considered, and the, the role of the actors is very important. So I think that uh, coming to what you said, Doug, about the just transition, I, I think that just transition is a, is a very big... Uh, um, mission, let's say, that cannot be achieved without uh, including also some important instrument coming from this uh, 
area of study and also of experimentation uh, because it regards the transformation of behaviors, lifestyles, and so on, and uh, putting together different actors with different perspectives. So, so it's uh, important to include, I think we, in, in fact, my, my suggestion is to, that, uh, um, to, to, to be able to exploit as better as possible this experience uh, done in, during these uh, 15 years in the new program, but in general in the, in the new context of the new program. I mean, and if I may add to Fabio and also link back to Agnes's uh, comments about how to incorporate these things in proposal writing, there's a key issue here. One is about time and scale, about transformations. In the lifetime of a project, how do you identify, you know, four or five years, uh, transformative change? How do you do this? Yeah? How do you do this? You can, you can indicate institutional change, perhaps. You can start measuring it. And so this is one of the issues uh, which is a challenge for both RRI and transitions. Transitions tend to think of long term, long term, long time scales. Um, for these projects for Horizon Europe, three, four years long, how are we going to mobilize the RRI and transitions thinking in being able to monitor at least the beginnings of transformative change or perhaps the contributions to these missions? Missions will not be a success in a project, but identifying the contributions to the change is something that we might want to consider. And I think there are lessons to be learned from both communities there. Thank you. Thank you all for your questions and contributions so far. We'd like to take you now to a little more interactive part where you can share more of your questions and thoughts. Um, so what we're going to do now is for I think it's just like 15, 17 minutes. Um, we split up into working groups, basically just to better facilitate a discussion and to invite more people to um, to um, share their thoughts. So the all three working groups will have basically the same theme, the same questions that they will be looking at. So the question is, what is the most important challenge for bringing together RI and ST? So we have heard really, really a lot of challenges but uh, maybe we can take some time for the remaining um, time of the session to think about what is the most important or what is the most yeah, important th uh, thing from our personal views um, and then we each uh, of the three groups would collect that would maybe come up with one or two um, most important challenges maybe you have some time to also think about um, well how to overcome them that is but this is another question this is not this is just optional. So um, think, take your time in the groups to think about this, what, what the most important challenges um, are out there in your view. And then we come back for the last 10 minutes and collect a bit on that. So this is just a little exercise on prioritizing a bit what we heard and taking on board more of your personal views on that. So um, we um, suggest to do it the following way. There will be three groups. One group will be um, facilitated by Ulrike and Agnes. One will be facilitated by Ralph and Douglas, and one will be facilitated by me and Fabio. And you all will be randomly um, allocated to one of those three groups. Um, that will happen now in the next few minutes, and then we'll meet in the group rooms. And in the end, you will be automatically taken back to the plenary for the last 10 minutes of wrapping up. Welcome back. Thank you for the great discussion. It was short, but uh, insightful, and I hope that everybody had uh, the chance um, to participate. Uh, we all want to know now what has been discussed in the other groups, and I would like to ask uh, the group uh, of uh, Stephanie and Fabio to start probably with a little insight in their discussion and the main aspects. Yes, um, but somehow um, I think now um, it remains to be my task. <laughs> we, we try to spend a bit talking about the issue and not talking about who's going to report that. And we talked about many issues, but um, um, I think we, we had some kind of um, repetition of issues that were mentioned in the, in the session before, um, which were about um, um, yeah, the separation of the two communities that creates a problem for working together, obviously. Um, and also a forward-looking perspective that um, the opportunities offered in the Green Deal are really interesting in terms of 
um, the, that, um, yeah, the desire that is mentioned there for just an inclusive transitions, but all um, at the same time, there's quite a, a, a just a, a little recognition of public engagement as a means or a process uh, to to uh, achieve that. So um, this was an interesting observation. Um, and I'd like to share one point, which I think was was new to the discussion and which was not shared um, in the beginning, uh, in, the, in the first part of the session, which was shared by Ingeborg. Um, she uh, mentioned that from the policy side, um, it's often not readable um, to people what the communities can uh, can actually contribute and, and how they can um, contribute to impact. So it's 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 um, it's clear that a lot of things are going on, but it's not clear actually, um, yeah, who can uh, who can do what, and maybe what they can achieve together. So um, so this is um, an invitation not to take just this kind of inner perspective that we took today, but also to take this um, perspective from the outside and to see that um, it's. It's not only about achieving impacts, and this is uh, already a huge task. It's also about um, better communicating and better make it understandable for outsiders um, what kind of impacts can be achieved and what can be the next step, so to speak. So, in Ingeborg, you might um, add to that, or anybody else from the session, if I if I somehow misinterpreted that. Uh, no, that was uh, fine already. Indeed, um, I picked on the on Fabio's point with the um, different uh, separated communities and said that this is on the policy side really puzzling and particularly, I mean, it's very difficult really to, to read then the differences between the communities. I read some in the chats on, on the self-reflection here in, in this conference. So any efforts to explain that to the outside world. So this is more the community of <laughs> and the difference to that is that. And if you have this in this question or this direction, then that is probably a better, better place uh, to go. And um, of course, then uh, any efforts to link that better, I mean, realizing what are the differences and the strengths of each is one thing, but then connecting better, that would of course uh, be uh, very, uh, very welcomed. I mean, the policy side is trying a lot on policy coherence, a new term uh, for overcoming such uh, separations and, and contradictions maybe even. So on the, on the science and research side, that would also be very welcome. And my second point was then, it would be really good to kind of the walk the talk and uh, trying oneself <clears throat> to identify what can be done as scientists, as research institute, and what after these kind of steps or with these steps, what is really, really needed on the enabling on the research policy side. So a bit uh, here on how to overcome the separations, always two sides that can, uh, can do things, uh, I think, or it would be nice if that was the case. Stephanie, if yeah. I may, about the separation, I um, think, uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, sorry for that, Fabio. I, I, I think we have to go on, but we can, we can, uh, we can continue, um, I think, um afterwards will, or yeah yeah we will continue uh, the the discussion and uh, we will give you also the contacts and uh, to go on um i think we will now summarize the uh, the groups first and continue with uh, ralph and, and douglas thank you Okay, yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll try to make it short looking at the, at the time. Um, just um, uh, to briefly summarize, we had, a, I think, a, a really uh, um, a rich discussion and just the pity was so short. Um, but um, uh, we started out, out actually uh, raising the question, why do we want to uh, build these bridges between these communities? And, and, and that brought us to, to, to quite some, I thought, quite interesting insights and, and clarifications. Um, one of the participants put it quite nicely that that the main focus of, of uh, the, the, the RI community is, is about is, is driven by their unease with with the way research innovation is performed and conducted at the moment the structures and the and the way uh, career paths are, are being organized and these things so there's a lot of criticism driving much of, of the work in, in the RI community whereas 
the, the, the sustainable heat transitions are not so much preoccupied with these issues, but more looking at, at, um, at the results, at the impacts, uh, uh, things need to be changed. Um, and, 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 and the second point that was raised, and that is also uh, one of the things why we need to talk about these things, uh, I suppose, is that the directions in, in the sustainability transitions communities are in many ways already set, or at, at least uh, to, to a certain extent predefined. Whereas the focus on RRI is much about actually developing processes on, on, on finding a consensus which uh, directions uh, research innovation should take. And, uh, and, and so this also brought us to the discussion, well, um, uh, what if the directions that are being uh, set in a bottom-up, very democratic process, do not automatically fit with uh, what, what uh, sustainability actually requires? And, and this is one of the things that I think uh, were already nicely put in, in the plenary um, uh, chat contribution by, by Cornelia Conrad. I think she was referring to, to exactly this tension. And, um, and, and just to summarize this, this would be one of the things we, we should probably need to, to tackle when we, when we uh, bring these communities together. But I, I, this is not a message of despair. On the contrary, I would, would say it is actually a, 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 such a tension is extremely important and productive uh, because it brings both sides to, to think about um, their, their, um, their, their, their points of departure. That's it for now, <laughs> Stephanie. Thank you, Ralph. Um, I would uh, make it shortly on our uh, third group uh, discussion where I think we can add that uh, a strong point was made on the uh, divergence of uh, the communities and in the communities that uh, not all researchers active in the one field or the other would uh, feel themselves summarized uh, under uh, sustainability transitions community research. Our research and they um, would probably um, not uh, follow all uh, lines that we would uh, identify as uh, what the community is when talking about in general. So um, this was uh, one point. Uh, the other was how then to solve uh, the question, how to bring the communities together. This was, uh, we thought that uh, a goal would that it might be an idea to concentrate on a specific uh, field of uh, the objective of carbon neutrality and uh, that this might be uh, a starting point to to uh, focus on because they are uh, similar objectives uh, one strong point for ri would uh, for example be as um, uh, Agnes uh, said in her introduction that um, there are researchers of the natural scientists who would like to go into the field to open up to, to RRI and uh, to, to have more impact and uh, that training and uh, open up to, to these communities might be to, to talk about the third community, which might be much uh, broader and uh, more uh, diverse still to get uh, there. Um, I would like to ask uh, the participants of the third group if they would like uh, to add, uh, uh, and Lawrence, who, who also uh, argued in this group, to, to add what I just said. Okay, well, yes, thank you. I dropped out for a bit but came back in the breakout session. I think that one key connection point between the two communities could be uh, through the perspective of just transitions. Uh, because the transition scene is now very much thinking about how can we do transition in a just way and also think about negative consequences for groups, for inclusion, for exclusion. So they're thinking about this. This is obviously core in RRI. So that could be really an entry point to bring the communities together. On the other hand, uh, there are some challenges, uh, missions, long term transformative goals, how to make it compatible with shorter RRI cycles. I think there could still be a major challenge, but perhaps connecting it to uh, approaches such as strategic niche management, uh, responsible strategic niche management could be a way to just get stuff going because that's probably the best uh, to start doing it. But I, I think there are multiple entry points. And then indeed, uh, as Ulrike said, uh, a topic like climate change could be a, a nice one to start with. Yeah? You need to start with something. So yeah, very nice session. Thank you. Um, thank you very uh, much indeed. Uh, Shauna, I think you produced a compilation of our main aspects from the three groups uh, and uh, we will
Um, sorry, just to be on the safe side, did I uh, skip the fourth group? No, it's all fine, isn't it? My apologies. We're only three groups, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, thank you. So um, I, I think we will um, uh, make this available uh, to you. We have uh, strong points made in all the groups, and I think the main point would be now to start the discussion uh, all together. We will not be able to do this in this session, but um, we will make in the chat available to you the main points that we have just uh, um, uh, in the chat, the, the contacts of all the speakers avail uh, here and uh, the hosts. So please feel free to contact us and um, we will stay on in the session right now. As I see, which is a big pity that we have just um, finished the time and uh, we need uh, to to um, uh, close the session um, but as i said we are available around here longer and you can uh, continue to discuss with us um, i would like to thank very much uh, the speakers uh, the the brilliant uh, contributions we had uh, to the session and the great discussions in the group thank you very much to speakers and the co-hosts thank you very much and uh, hope to see you in the right now continuing uh, discuss the discussion or uh, in the follow-ups in this conference in the um, next week this week and next week thank you